also in the song. You apparently did it as a band I mean, in 79, he says, uh, at a time when, you know, the new wave uh, scene was sort of flowering. And you apparently appeared on stage in, in Space Corps. <laughs> no, Frank and I used to go. We used to go out to clubs and stuff, dressed a bit spacey, didn't we? Yeah. Because I mean, you're talking about a punk scene where everyone's in black with black spiky hair, mm -hmm. and Frank and I, you'd go out with like bright red hair and uh, purple and green space type tunic, and I'd go out in a like um, what color was that? Like wine color. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we weren't trying to really radically be different. We were just trying to say to, for ourselves that we just we wanted it. to go in a direction where we wanted to do what we wanted to do and try and be like the people to say, I want to look like that. Mm. I didn't want to say, I want to look like him. I wanted people to say, I want to look like him. And we began to do it. And it, 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 be, it began to show when we, begin, we began to tour that we found that we could wear things. Like, and people like, spilled tomato sauce on myself. Someone would copy me. You know, that's not to say doing that, but trying to, to, to be in that situation where people will say, oh, I like the way you dress and not copy anybody else. But, but being influenced by, by certain fashions and styles, not actually copying. Hmm. That was on, on stage? You said you on Anop. It was on Anop. It was a full time situation. Without being too posy or glamorous, mm -hmm. you know. What did the uh, audiences think of this? They loved it. <laughs> And we're talking about we're playing in, in front of a small bar, mm -hmm. you know, with 15 people there, and we were doing it then, and we got great success and stuff. Mm -hmm. It worked. As soon as we started doing our mainline tour, I mean, never did that. Mm -hmm. the, only, the only spacey thing was the hair, wasn't it? And we noticed people coming up and asking for autographs and giving us presents dressed similar to what we were, and that was good. Mm -hmm. Why did you drop that, though? Well, we didn't want to stick with it and we didn't want people to label us as looking like that, you know, we wanted to just try to become ourselves using that way of, you know, that, that say it. using that as a, like our springboard, you know, people now know the name of the band, now we've got to convince them that we're not just a, a fashion, fashion, you know, we're going to be here to like and do things for the next five, six, ten years, whatever. And, and, and our, we'd like our audience to be the kind of audiences anybody can like a flock of seagulls. Mm. We don't want all the people to come looking like all makeup and nice haircuts and clothes, right? Anybody who can listen to the music can come can be like a seagull fan. But they do anyway, we've got quite a wide yeah. spectrum. Yeah. The open covers a wide range. Mm. Mm. Mums, dads, kids, grannies. I mean, we get, yeah. we get like, you know, like he says, mums and dads coming up with their kids to the concert and they say, I love that song, the more you live, the more you love. Yeah, and they say like wow and the kids go yeah it's great and the fellas go yeah I like that one as well whereas before when we were space fans you know the hairdos and all that it was a really like a, a section of wasn't it of like fashionable kids that used to come and see us but now it's starting to spread so we see that as like okay we're not maybe as as in the public eye and not selling as many records but the base is firm now you know and it's like it's going to take a while now to filter through into the, the whole spectrum of people. Mm. But the thing is now, when we hit it big now, it's going to be real big. Because when I ran was a hit and all that, that, that could have been just a flash. So many bands come up with like a great concept, one or two songs, thank you, good night. You know, and then that, they're still trying to do the same thing again five years later with the same style. And it's no good. You've got to get out of it. Whatever made you a success, you've got to ride it for what it's worth and then change and show people that you, you know, you're a musician, not a fan. I don't want to try and get to 40 years old and still trying to be putting my hair up <laughs> in wings, you know what I mean? Right, right. So we decided that we calm ourselves down and just become musicians. Seems to be an especially common form of evolution of uh, British bands. The way that I was looking for before. <laughs> evolution, yeah. Evolution. Um, you know, just a lot of American guys just stay the same for yeah. 10, 15, 20 years. Bruce Springsteen is next to all these things. Oh, we'll but then again, that's, doing Iran. <laughs> <laughs> that's Americana, though, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's the way they are. Uh -huh. That's the important thing about music, you know, it's like you've still got to play your big songs 15 years' time. I mean, mm -hmm. we'd like actually to drop all those songs and do new ones, but you can't do it, you know. And I think a lot of bands would like to do that as well. Yeah, you can put them up in the old ways. Mainstream of New Wave is sort of this idea of talking about reality, facing reality. You weren't 
uh, encounter, you didn't encounter any uh, negative criticism or anything like that. I used to get beat up in the street for, for not being a punk rocker or because I'd been one in like 1977, 78 when I was like really young. Uh-huh. I mean, me and Michael going out dressed in the like kind of uh, eccentric, we used to spacey like, clothes. Like I'd, get out, I'd end up in hospital. Didn't you know? Yeah. But we got we got negativity. You know, we got bad reviews. You know, we got pr- the press, press always hated us. You know, right, the press hated us. Just because we weren't doomy and blue. Because we were 1984 and 1981, mm. and like you know, we didn't. We never mentioned politics, still don't, you know, like, you know, the British press loves it, politics, you know, yeah. like, okay. yeah, we refuse, you know, mm. they, they got the clash and all that to talk about. Frankie goes to Hollywood, the classic, you know, rock politicians, mm. you know. Yeah, we took quite a bit of stick on the way, still do sometimes, you know, mm. it's part of the game, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm the one you must be pretty fed up with the uh, press in Britain then. No, we're not fed up because we don't, don't read the papers. <laughs> right. Right. No. It's like what well, well, Mark saying is. It doesn't teach know. me how to play the instrument any better. Today's review is tomorrow's chip paper. You throw it away. But I mean, <laughs> especially when I keep uh, abreast of what's happening. Well, you know, the, the new yeah. music press in England won't tell you what's, what's happening, you know. Well, they'll tell you what's happened. <laughs> <laughs> but they tell you what they'd like to happen. They won't they tell me anything what's new. Happened, you know. You want to, like, you, uh, educate me. Right, you, just, you know, they like to say more shine, you know. Mm-hmm. They just they they write what they think is hip to write. I mean, a lot of them are starting to cover themselves, especially with those. They go, "This is a pile of rubbish," but it's starting to sound good. I like <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's what they do. In other words, they're saying, I, "I don't know whether this is good or not because mm-hmm. no, you know it's not a big hit, so maybe it's not that good." But then again, I like it, mm-hmm. and it's a bit of a hit, so maybe it's good. And like now, they just don't know. You know, it's like. Uh, hang on, because they, they expected us to disappear after three mm-hmm. singles, and it's and now didn't. three albums, and we're still there, still going strong. And we're still, we still seem to be in the same position as we were with the press and anything to do with that. Now, as we were in the very beginning, mm-hmm. but they're beginning to listen to us a bit more now, and they're beginning to write nicer things because you know that from what slagging that they've given us, and we should, all, be, everything, we we should be destroyed and dead. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't be around anymore. Mm-hmm. But we're still around. And the bands that they hailed and said this is going to be it, and, and not so, and we are still here, you know. After yeah, and there's now all that. There's, there's a new generation of bands now that because we were successful, they're starting to sound like, like us. us. Oh, I mean, there's, there's a, well, I mean, bands that just start snorting, people are starting to say, um, they sound a bit like us, like the Seagulls, like, yeah. um, God, who was that band? I saw them in New York. Modern English. Mm. You know, they are starting to sound like us. Mm. Yeah, but with their own, but still the same kind of little melodies as we do and all that. And like Frank says, we were doing them in, in 1981, 82, and it's now starting to come through in other bands. Mm. Mm. So the press are kind of going, I like this band, but they sound a bit like the Flock of Seagulls. So I can't like them. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't like them, you know. There seems to be a lot of private feuding, like, you know, a manager of a band, a band that was complaining to a certain management for paper, also, that paper just. Drops a pile of bricks on you, everything, yeah. anything. So they've dropped everything on us. Well, I mean, we we don't fight them, you know. It's like they Max. give us a bad review. We don't bother. Mm-hmm. Never did. We, just, well, we got, got, got a really, us. really bad review for the first album. So our manager sent the girl that did it a bunch of roses. Is that right? Yeah. Oh. yeah. And it was just like saying, you know, because it doesn't matter. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So what what can you do? But I mean, it didn't affect us at all. It sold a million. What can you say? Yeah. You, you do grand interviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, want to speak to us, we'll speak to them. <laughs> it's like we still smile through our teeth and stuff. And, you know. But we say we don't want to talk about politics, we don't want to talk about this, we don't, want that that right? don't like that. You set conditions for yeah. 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 Is that Why right? not? Because they'll, they'll try and lead you along a you know, political path. And like no. this. We're, not, we're not interested in politics, that you know. We're interested in being Music, creative yeah. musicians, you know, they're not really copying anybody else. They don't actually write what you say, they twist it. Like, you yeah. say you're supposed to be a big rock star, say you suddenly go out and buy a big Mac, right? So they'll twist that that you're tight with your money. Mm. It's not that you like Big Macs. Yeah. You know, they say, he's really tight with his money or something like that. You know, Or he had a hole in his shoe. They might be the most comfortable shoes he's got. You know, I mean, So what if he's rich? He was, just wants to wear them. He's just doing an interview. It's not you know, it's not like a jury taking him to pieces. But they don't look at it like that. Mm. They want to really take you to pieces. And, you know. mm. well, they are pretty unpleasant to the uh, British press. For most of them, are like 16 or 17. You know, Frustrated musicians. They, they can't get into music in any way. 
so they slight people that have got into it, you know, because they haven't been able to. Uh, is it true that you're a lot more popular in America than you are in Britain? I don't know. <laughs> per, uh, I wouldn't. No. Per population, per head, per population. I mean, percentage-wise, yeah. I think it must be about the same. Yeah. Is that right? Because yeah. yeah. uh, we just had uh, a top 30 hit in England with a record that wasn't a top. It was only like number 60 in America. And well, hits in Europe, <coughs> which we never had before, so you know, it evens it all out really. In Britain and Europe, it's been like gradual. The first album did well, the second did better, and now the third one's done better again. Whereas in America, the first one was like a smash, and the other two have been. We've kind of like overridden the press, you know. Regardless. So when, when we were touring with the police, Sting said to us, he said, um, you know, you guys really get a slagging, don't you, from the press? And we said, yeah, and he goes, well. It can be huge then, because yeah. like, he said that's the same thing that happened to them. Yeah. Yeah. They had to just carry on and, and beat it on their own terms, you know. <laughs> Look at them now. But the stuff that went over in America didn't really go over that much no. in Britain, no. no. What do you think the difference is? Why would something like that go over? Well, that's different culture, isn't it? You, know, you, got, you go to America and like, you got the sunshine, you know, you got the a well, fairly easy style of living. England is pretty poverty you know. In, in, in America, if people like something, you won't be intimidated by the friend because they don't like it. Mm -hmm. They'll go and buy it. And in England, because it's all very close together, someone buys something, well, he, he, he won't tell his friend that he's bought it because he'll say, oh, you bought that. <laughs> but in America, you know, I mean, everyone's, everyone, they're all themselves. But in England, everyone seems to be detraining their eyes on other people's, you know, the way they do things and they're fighting to do things and make it like decisions on their own, you know. You would, you would think that the British kids would, you know, go out of their way to listen to something different though, because they want to always be different. Well, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't say that like that. But I would think it's like oh, Iran, Iran and stuff was more rock and roll. The hits yeah, in America were more rock and roll. The hits in England there were more individual songs like Wishing, you know, and mm -hmm. the more you live. I'm mm -hmm. saying it's culture, you know. Different, you know, whole different way of living, you know. Yeah. And, but uh, I mean, it's yeah. what each, each nation can relate to, you know. Iran, for instance, was big. It had a good lead guitar riff, big rock song. In England, the kids didn't like that because it had all the lead guitar stuff. Yeah, they, were all, kind of they were all into synths then, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, now America is all synth band. You know, you look at it, it's all synth. And England's all guitars. It's all guitar bands in England now. Do you know another thing? Put it up and down in your latest albums. You know, the guitar is still out in front, uh, and it's a lot more rhythm oriented, so it should go over big in Britain. Yeah, well, it, it has. It has. Yeah. I mean, a lot, a lot. It got, it got well accepted, not so much by um, the press critics, but radio especially, because mm -hmm. they really. I mean, when it first came out, we got so much radio play from it on album play. You know, they played the whole album, and mm -hmm. people like Radio One just picked it up and went, played the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, and that's never happened. That's never happened. It doesn't happen very much to anybody at all. Is that right? Yeah. And they, they suddenly, like, you know, we got to do a live thing, you know. BBC come out. We, we, did a, we did a live thing, you know, four songs off the album, and they turned out it's the best stuff we've ever had. And they played it something like three times in a month, didn't they? You know, they just don't do that kind of thing. So, as far as we're concerned, we were right, you know, as a band to choose this direction to go in. Mm -hmm. And okay, we may lose popularity in America, but will help us ourselves to grow as a band, mm -hmm. and that will have to grow back again. You know. Well, we'd like to spread ourselves anyway. You know, I mean, there's, a, there's other big markets apart from America. You know, Japan, for instance, mm -hmm. France, Germany, and we do well in France. Well, not France, but Germany. We do especially well in you know. mm -hmm. And that's as big a market as the States when you weigh it up. You know, yeah. as long as you're popular somewhere. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? But to be a little bit popular in all these places is good because you can only grow. And I'd be a big somewhere. First time has given us that chance to financially to try to try and go quicker and all the Yeah, it's things. like you know you may happen this year in America, next year in Europe, the year after in like Japan, Australia, and all that kind mm -hmm. of thing, and then it may happen in all of them at once. Right. Right. There are a few accused all the people yeah. all the time. Yeah. 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 It's possible. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I think that's when you leap up into the different yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I mean, like you know, Bowie just sort of did that, like pull you know, the rabbit out of his hat with the best band. No one has expected. Saying the police and synchronicity. Yeah, please. Well, you know, they, they've been big in England and then they've dropped down a bit and gone up in America and then suddenly they, yeah, they disappeared like, in the United know. Kingdom at one point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Me and Mike were saying, nah, the police. Mm -hmm. You were over in the States. 
You know, yeah. No one in, in England is bothered listening to America. You know, and suddenly you, you no put out the right listening. song, mm-hmm. uh, and everybody in each one of those area, areas goes, wow, this is the mm-hmm. one. And suddenly you find yourself big all over the world. Mm-hmm. Have you thought about that as a, as a possibility for yourself? Yeah, but I haven't, uh, you know, uh, when we write, I wouldn't say we actually think, let's write a song that's going to do this. We just write what we like. You know, and, and, and if it happens, it happens. And we, have, we have a problem getting that big all over the world anyway, because mm. the, our release dates are always spread out, you know. It never gets released all at once, mm. so it doesn't get a chance to sell. I mean, I think Wishing would have done that for us, mm. if, if the record companies had coordinated it properly. Because it went, it was out in England, and it was top ten at Christmas. Mm. And it wasn't even released in America. Mm. And yet, it, when we went over there, the same Christmas to play, it was getting like massive radio play. Mm-hmm. Nobody could buy it. But nobody could buy it. Mm-hmm. So it went out six months later and it only got into the top 30. Because uh-huh. everybody was burnt out with it, you know. But if they'd, have all, if they'd have got together and both put it out before Christmas, I'm sure it would have been top 10 America and England and that would have made it top 10 in Japan and Australia and Europe. Mm-hmm. And then it suddenly it would have been like, wow, yeah, what a band. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 The album is entitled The Story of the Young Heart. Indeed, the songs seem to depict, the, rather vividly depict the emotions of you know, a young person. Do you feel that that sort of a, a identity or persona stays on in, in the hearts of people, no matter how old they get? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm pretty old, and it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think that no matter how old people get, they the always remain. Old. The body gets old, but the mind remains the same. I feel the same as when I was like 14 or 15. You know that. I still think about the same things, and I think everybody does. <coughs> and it, it is literally the story that everybody knows, you know, and that's why it's called the story of the young heart. Because everyone's young at heart. You can speak to your father, mm-hmm. you know, or your grandfather, and they'll understand the songs as mm-hmm. well as you do. Maybe they're put in a slightly different way, you know, but they, they understand the emotion and the feeling. And the, the thing is, it's supposed to be about uh, someone who's contemplating suicide, you know, because of a broken heart and all that. And everybody's felt like that, I think, at some point. Everybody I know has felt like that. Hmm. Well, my parents, at a, at a point, like only like a year ago, never got into like music on like a commercial pop level. And it was always like Sinatra and like, Charlie Pride and all this, until I got in the band. Mm-hmm. And they listened to the stuff that we you know, brought out, which then, made me dad think, well, this is it. I mean, imagine what else is out there, you know, it was the Jake, you know what I mean? And he got into listening to the police and Genesis and all this, and he listens to it now at home, whatever yeah. it is, and he listens to everything. And I'll go home and say, yeah, have you heard this? Have you heard that? And I'll go, oh, wow, you know. Yeah, right. I've missed out on this, and he'll, he'll go, yeah, bizarre. Uh, <laughs> but he'd never heard, heard it before until someone of his own, member of his own family had done it, you know. And he, he, he can't believe it, you know, that he missed out so long on something which he just thought was a loud noise. Well, how, how old is, you know? He's 55. Is that right? And it used to be a loud noise until we did it. And you can hear some of the ears it now, with the way he was deaf to it before. Oh. Yeah. So the young hearts still exist. Exist in me, Father. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just that it gets clouded behind, you know, in an aging body. Mm-hmm. But so bizarre, we're, what it? we're trying to get through to is that there's an inside rather than mm-hmm. there's an outside. You know? How did you get all that idea? Was there any one experience that went through it? Just, just by, by having all that time off, it, it gave, the, the, the lyrics part of it, you know, gave me a lot of time to think about how I how I felt when I was younger and what I've been through. Like, well, you know, I've been an electrician and I've worked in shops and I've, I've been married and divorced and I still feel the same. You know, I've been through all that as a person and all it is is experience. Mm. And yet I still remember the same things I did when I was like 14, mm. you know, and we all spoke about it and it came through as that, mm. you know, we, we shouldn't write for the, the feet, we should write for the heart, so mm. to speak, you know. Mm. Remember that line. <laughs> 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 that's, that's the next topic. Mm. I don't know when you Japan, the general consensus is that you stop being young, or when you stop being young, you become a true person, you know, a, a real adult in your own right. Uh, what do you think of that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well I, I, how it's can probably we say true that? in a sense, but I mean, you know, you're a fuller person. But at the same time, why stop? You know, why why think that your young life has ended? You know, I mean, when when is that point? Does it come at forty years old or you know, menopause or whatever? Or you know, there's no point when you can say I'm old. 
Mm. I think there's a point where you can take the you can stay young, but you can accept responsibility. Mm. You know, and it's a, it's like discipline, isn't it? You know, you, you can say to yourself, when I was a kid, I would have done that, and it was stupid. But now, I'd like to do it, but I'm not going to do it because I know it's wrong. Mm. Yeah. Some of the, some of the yeah. sort of youngest, freshest minds I ever met were old age pensioners in England. You know, I was working in an old age pensioners home, mm. and some of the stories they used to tell me, and you know, it's like, you think these aren't old people, really? You know, they, but they call still it function as young people. They yeah. call it a second childhood, mm. and it's probably the fact that they are free again. Mm. You know, that they they know they're going to die or whatever, and that they release their mind. You know, they think about. I mean, their body can't do things, so their mind has to do it. You know. So they, they enter a different state again. Mm. They go backwards. Mm. And maybe somebody gets to, to being physically old, you know, and, and then they may want to. Um, they've been through like marriage, and the children have grown up, and they have time again, you know. But they still have. They're still young enough inside to say, yeah, let's go off to India, or let's go mm. and take a holiday and go surfing in Hawaii, or mm. you know, if they can't do it, they can watch it or become involved in some way. So I, I think that inside, everybody is still young, you know. Yeah, there's no point where you can say, you know, I shouldn't do this because I'm too old to do this. Mm. If it's still there to do it, you know, do it. What is it? Or thinking, it? whatever. You know. I mean, or you, you know, let me say, say you were a runner and you became too old, but you still could run in your heart and your mind. Well, then I think it's to get someone who's got the same feeling and teach them, you know. Well, it's like coaches and, you know, yeah. football coaches or whatever, you know. They still want to do it, you know. They still feel that they're capable of giving something and so they want to be a part of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we're all going to be managers. We're going to be dead. A guy like Paul Weller, is just saying, you know, when I'm, you know, you have to be young to do rock, you know, saying, when I'm 40 years old, I can't think of something. Look at Chuck Berry. Mm-hmm. No. Said it all. <laughs> <laughs> nah. A lot of people will say, yeah, I'm not Chuck Berry. I'm not looking to say that. My God, I can't believe that guy's looking at me. 60 odd. Who cares what Paul Weller says, anyway? Who's Paul Weller? Well, he's been uh, rather harsh on the older uh, rockers. I can remember him saying it was disgusting. But he's not. He's not in the same league. I mean, you know, he's got nothing to do with him. What Keith Richards does. Mm. Why doesn't he get his own house straight? Mm. You know, mm. that's a typical sort of British attitude. Just to slag everybody else. You know, <laughs> everybody else who they, who they think they should be. Mm. Maybe slag them in. Mm. Well, I mean, how old Paul Weller? Well, lend him a gun. I think he's is very uh, quick to uh, praise Pete Townshend. Because he was in a jam, he was in a band called The Jam, who were very much like The Who, you know, and that's why, so that's where his influence immediately springs to mind for me. Maybe he's saying it just to be a little bit controversial, Mm. you know, he gives a shit what he's saying, Mm. I don't give a shit. Mm. I didn't agree with him either. I mean, for all Keith Richards, the Stones still came out with one of the best records of last year, didn't they? Paul Weller didn't. What can you say about that? <laughs> Sky Maybe Council. Maybe he's too old already. Yeah. He's already he hasn't returned his young heart. <laughs> so you want to uh, continue singing these like, perfect universal, sort of timeless type of keys? Uh, to say? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We haven't even you know, work on the new albums just being planned now, you know. I, I think it must be great to write a song that's a standard, like, I mean, say like Paul McCartney wrote yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. When I hear it on the radio now, it still sounds as good to me as when I first heard it. You know what I mean? Because it's got all that. It, it, it hits you where it goes, you know what I mean? It's got soul, like it says. Mm-hmm. Or, or some of the old Motown songs, mm-hmm. you know? And how long did it take him to actually learn how to do that? You know, whether you learn to do it, you know, to write a song like yesterday and stuff. Mm-hmm. No, and that's what, what we're after, you know. It's like, hey, that back to my line again, isn't it? You know, that was written for the heart, not the feet, you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. And um, so much music these days is just written for the feet. Mm. It's a good beat for five minutes in a club. Nobody really knows what it's about, you know. Whatever it is, it's yeah. turned towards sex. It's disposable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's disposable. Yeah. And, like, I, I just, I'd like to turn on the radio, I think, in 20 years' time 
and someone say, you know, this is a great song, and then play Space Age Love Song or something. Mm. You know what I mean? Frank Sinatra singing it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, you, you listen to an old Frank Sinatra song, you know, and it's still great, right? Right? Mm. but I mean, if, who's going to be listening to Wake Me Up Before You Go Go, you know, in 20 years' time or something? Mm. Mm. Or Paul Ryan. <laughs> 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 and that, that's what I want. I want to write some songs I can be proud of, you know. And, mm stuff like that and people will still say they're great and, you know, yeah. I may not have done it yet you know we may not have done it yet but you know we aren't like kind of handsomest guys in the world you know but I mean you can just write songs for people to like that I think is the main thing you know I think the image is secondary mm. you know as far as I'm concerned and what they're concerned mm. you know do you think the key to it though is, is oh it's is like a big package the better looking you are the nicer clothes you've mm -hmm. got the better management the bigger company it's easier you know, but you're a small company, small management, you know, you're not great looking, you don't look like a model, you're not six foot tall. I mean, this all goes kind of against you, but mm. you can just carry on mm. and try, you know. Do you think that the truth test is that from years though? I mean, a lot of people think yeah, that, you know, the, the, the real beauty of something is it just is there in a flash and then it's gone. And I think the longer you keep at it and the well, longer, like the wine and things, flowers, you know, yeah. the longer, <laughs> the longer you, you, you keep and mature, you know, the, the better it is. Flashes in the pan. Yeah. Forget about them. A lot of bands that you know were around when we were growing up. You've forgotten most of them. You just remember the Beatles, yeah. the Stones. Yeah, the ones you know, who the, kept. The ones who yeah, did your jobs. Yeah. You still remember it. You know, occasionally one day you'll probably think, oh, I remember that band. Yeah, and then well, I, was, that. I still have a soft spot in my heart for my the band and so on. You know, there's one hit one. Well, yeah, I mean, well, it's, I like that, get um, them. <laughs> it's like that in the year, what was it, Xavier and Evans? Yeah, you know, that, mm -hmm. that was there, one hit, but it was brilliant, and if it, if it comes on the radio now, I turn it off. Oh, really? You know, yeah, I mean, 25, 25, <laughs> you know, all that stuff. Because you suddenly go, wow, what, you know, what a song, and all your memories come back. And that's the... Uh, but if you don't hear it, you've forgotten it, haven't you? You know, you can't, you can't think of it if... Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you can always think of the Beatles or whatever, mm. you know. Mm. They're always there, they're always present. Mm. <laughs> Beethoven never had videos or things like that, but you still hear of all of them all the time. They're always the best from that time. Mm -hmm. You know, they're always around and they'll always be around. Mm -hmm. There was thousands of musicians like them at that time. Mm -hmm. And he was dead. Part of the right uh, songs by different things, some people buy you know, a scene from a movie, others by an experience, you know, they had a linear arcade or an experience that happened in a movie before they wrote the actual song. How about in your case, what type of things act as catalysts? Or the process. Anything. I mean, the, the song Nightmares was a, about a movie. Mommy did, you know, Mommy did a movie. Um, I Ran was triggered off by a, a, a negative of a photograph that we saw. Wishing was triggered off by a photograph. You know, I, I saw a photograph and stuff like that. Um, I mean, you can just for some reason pull them out of thin air without mm. thinking of anything you can just like I mean the, the story of the Young Hearts was, was inspired just by the fact that we'd written songs and we needed another song and I would just had this idea for uh, what the songs were all about and I needed something to put it in a nutshell you mm. know what I mean so that song just kind of I was just playing away and it went bong and it was there and it meant everything which and it, on the album yeah, yeah. And, it, and it was just by necessity it was it inspired itself. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? How about if I say the last song you wrote was that inspired by? Story of Young Heart. That, 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 that was the last song you wrote. We needed a song and it was <laughs> the first song we wrote was called The End. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, so it can, it doesn't have to be inspired by anything but just thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, and but sometimes you, you get an idea that just becomes a song. You know, you suddenly think, like you may see a couple of words. I mean, for instance. Uh, like Alan Rigby or something was was uh, inspired wasn't it, by just seeing a tramp, mm. and he, he saw at the same time he saw a tramp he saw the name Rigby was 
or something on a bakery that on Paul McCartney, you know, he's just driving along in a bus or something like that. And it suddenly went, ding, you know, mm. Alan Ripley, I'll call that song Alan Ripley. Mm. You know, so it's not as if you have to sit down and ponder it. Mm. You know, I think that is uh, the old idea of a concept is to, to sit down and ponder it like that. It's almost like work now. <laughs> it's, not in, it's not there, it's not there, you know. Go mad. But nowadays, I think, I mean, yeah, the story of the young heart is very, a very, very loose concept, simply because the last thing written was the actual concept song of it, you know, the, the title of it and all that. I was thinking of the, our best songs anyway, the ones where you all feel good playing it, you know, you can always tell if you, when you're playing a song if it's, if it's working, you know. Mm -hmm. And some of the, sometimes, songs that we've dropped have been songs that we're all struggling to learn, you know. Mm. So it's the instantaneous ones that are mm. usually the good ones. I mean, she talked about like a, a negative one, a picture a picture and also a movie so it seems like visual stimuli oh yeah sometimes yeah I mean you know nightmares just I was just thinking about the movie the music was already there but it's just like what shall I sing about oh well just for now I'll sing about this film mm. what was it about what was it like it must have been a nightmare mm. so suddenly it was night nightmares you know and then mm. it's just a case of like you start to write the lyrics and then then you start to think what else happened in the film, you know, or how did the kids feel, you know, and then you can start to sort of say, well, that line will put there because it means more, you know, and then you can start shuffling it around, but that isn't the initial inspiration, it's just kind of like a simple thought, you know. And then there's like DNA, where the, you know, no words can fit it, really. <laughs> you know, I saw some DNA. Yeah, there's, you know, we got a Grammy, we a Grammy. Oh, I mean, that, that was just me and Ali were messing around, Frank came up, threw some bass on, mm -hmm. and then Paul came up and played some guitar, and the reason it's called DNA, people think it's because it spirals, it's a spiral right. of life, it's right. a chemical, but it's not. Paul said to Frank, what are the chords? He said DNA. <laughs> you know, and that's what is written in the chords of DNA. And that's DNA, we'll, okay. call, we'll call it DNA. And it was like, oh look, DNA. Mm -hmm. There's okay. no lyrics could sort of fit it, so it's an instrumental. <laughs> you know, so I mean, it's just another way of finding a song. You know. yeah. Space Age Love Song, you know, we couldn't think of a title for it. it sounds like a Space Age Love Song. That's what we'll call it. They didn't say Space Age Love Song in the song. Yeah. It's really put across. Uh -huh. yeah. Who you Space Age Love Song? Probably a question here, which I think maybe the sign of uh, fatigue, but uh, <laughs> let's go with you with it anyway. I mean, there has been stories in Japan of these. Uh, they think they're like pieces of comics. Um, coming out of the sky, it was just for the last couple of days in the paper. And it looked like they're on fire, bolts of fire coming from the sky. Do you, does this type of thing uh, interest you? Yeah. Having been former space. Oh, we're, we're, still still now. <laughs> we're still space cadets. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just that we don't write about it anymore. I don't mean it's like, you know. Um, Isn't it interesting though? I mean, uh -huh. it's mm -hmm. like when we used to be hairdressers, uh -huh. right? But we're still, we're not now, but we still like, if we see a star, we go, that's a good star. I, mean, yeah. you know, I, I, I wonder how that was done. I've seen more interesting in haircuts in Japan than I've ever seen in London. Mm. 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 Great. Mm -hmm. and it's things like that, isn't it? I mean, just, yeah. just because you don't actively involve yourself in it anymore, it doesn't mean you're not as interested. It just means that you've done something and you've moved on to something else. Mm. It's like hobbies when you're a kid, you know, you pick up a hobby every week. You know, and then you can just nip back to that hobby whenever you see something interesting in it. Mm. I mean, nobody said we'd finish writing space song. Mm. It's just we've finished for now, you know what I mean? We may write one tomorrow. Mm. Yeah. There's money in it, we might. <laughs> <laughs> we may have to. The truth is that. <laughs> we do the super comics normally, on pieces of the comic, they look them under a microscope and found little bits of uh, uh, records. <laughs> the green oh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. I saw a film like that. Didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> well, it might be volcanic, you know. Yeah. It's been thrown well, up there, actually, you know. I, I don't know if you read this morning's paper, but it said this morning's paper that was actually fertilizer, and not really a comet. We can't read Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> we even have problems looking at the pictures. Do you know? <laughs> and you don't know where it's coming from. Yeah, it's a real mystery. But it just said this morning's paper that they analyzed and found it was uh, fertilizer. Well, it could be from like Hurricane Diana and stuff, throwing it up into mm -hmm. the atmosphere and stuff, and mm -hmm. it's coming back down and burning up on its way in and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, you know. I think actually that Japanese people do get really interested in that kind of thing, like phenomena, and mm -hmm. you know, because it seems that if you if you um, 
watched like old Japanese movies and all got Godzilla and you know, they, <laughs> they're, they're like interested in like cosmic things you know, yeah. they always have been the more interested kind of like something. on the inside of themselves and the outside you know the, 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 in, like the man in, in themselves the you know in, this is nothing <laughs> that's good I mean, they're, they're the ones that have worked out like transcendentalism and you know that this kind of this part of the world is that kind of thing going on. It didn't happen in Scotland or Britain. They're <laughs> 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 just busy trying to keep warm. <laughs> Pick some of the <laughs> building walls there. Yeah. Yeah. You recorded the song, a song called Tokyo, and uh, he says the impression you got from that was that you probably labeled the song Tokyo because you had an image of a very far off city that you knew very little of, and there was a sort of element of the unknown there. Now that you've actually come to Tokyo, what sort of impression do you have as compared to those you have when you labeled the song Tokyo? Pretty much the same. Oh, really? You know, it's, it sounds oriental, at least, you know, it's still pretty mystical, you know, mm -hmm. in a sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the lyrics in Tokyo is to say, like, you know, it's about his girlfriend ran away, and, like, the furthest place we could think of was Tokyo. Mm -hmm. You know, a New Delhi wouldn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't rhyme. <laughs> and, and, and because the the song had some kind of Oriental chord Feel, structure yeah. and stuff, hmm. Tokyo just seemed to fit in, and it was so far away. And um, but now that we're here, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's Tokyo. Isn't it? you know, what can you say? Hmm. It's like it's an Oriental city. I never imagined it to be as concrete as it. Yeah, I don't think we totally, totally imagined really. it to be like this. Green and pagodas and geisha girls. I was thinking of, you know, really? I'm coming here and I'm in the middle of uh, Akron, Ohio, you know what I mean? Detroit, Cleveland, you know what I mean? Detroit with Japanese right? language. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, you know, so interesting to go to these places. That, you, know, you, can, you can forgive all that, you know. One of the places we always wanted to go was Japan. Yeah. That was another reason for when we wrote Tokyo, we used to talk. In fact, when we wrote, the day we wrote Tokyo, we had a Japanese day. Because yeah. we have these silly games with ourselves. And, like, if we write a song that's, like, Tokyo, we all speak Japanese, like, yeah, ha, ha, for the rest <laughs> for of the, the day. day. <laughs> right, and, and um, we, we just have silly days. Like, if someone comes in and goes, like, today we're going to speak German. And it's all, you know, hello there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, like, uh, Tokyo was Japanese day, wasn't we it? We had the hairdressers and all these different kinds of people would come in, like, you know, Europeans and, you know, different people come in all the time from different nations and stuff, and it was easy for us to look at it and survey it, you know, and, and use it for ourselves, you know, in the sun and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it, not a lot, you know. Well, Japanese people would come in, you know, because Liverpool, the Beatles and all that, and you get a lot of tourists to come and pass the shop, and they just come in just to hear these wild sounds coming out of our air dressing salon, and they just come in just... You know, uh, yeah, the punk just to come and look in, you know, inquisitive, like, you know, just to come in and have a look around and stuff. Mm. And that was maybe sparked off that song, you know, Tokyo and stuff. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. 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 We just stayed friends. I went to see him just before we came away. Oh, he's still performing live? Uh, no, I mean, I went to his house. Oh, I see. You know, and we wrote him and all that. And, uh, I was there, you know, the all last day. Stuff the last thing he did uh, professionally with us was uh, when we remixed, well, re recorded talking, you know, for the second album. Uh huh. And uh, the last time I saw him, actually, I was he's really, seen him he's doing really well in Japan, isn't he? No, no. No, no he's just. Uh, for some well, reason, he's uh, good friends with the guys in YMO, especially the drummer, yeah. and they yeah. sort of have a, a working relationship where, you know, when he made the album, he sent the tapes over here, and the drummer had his drum for us. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but he's, all, he's always Jim Hall in the back, isn't he? He carries around this sort of Oriental... Yes, he's got that thing about it. I don't just have when I met him, he kind of had an Oriental... Yeah. He's a Yorkshire me. Japanese man. <laughs> <laughs> I would get that feeling with that kind of Orientalism is sort of considered very kitsch here. It doesn't go over at all. Mm -hmm. you know? So his, his albums aren't even released in Japan. Mm -hmm. He has an album, he has a, a very fun album. It's the great album. Oh, I love this stuff, you know, I, I just wish he had more support here and we could actually see him perform. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we toured with him in the early days. Yeah, right? he, didn't he, he toured with YMO, he played guitar. He came with, with the drummer, the drummer yeah. who did a solo yeah. thing. And he then, 
the drummer was on his new album, and I think it was going on tour with him. Right, right. Um, it's basically those two that that work in connection with him. But actually, he's on stage in Japan. Did you ever hear the Liverpool band thing in Japan? Yeah. He used yeah. to be headed by Holly. Yeah. Well, yeah. he wasn't headed by them. He didn't head it, it was Jane Casey. Was that right? Yeah, she was. He was the bass player, was he? Yeah, he was the bass player. I thought the bass player was that guy, you know. Bill Drummond, and that was the only thing to start. Holly was the bass player. James Casey. Uh, Saying is, you can teach me how to play the instrument any better. Today's review is tomorrow's chip paper. You throw it away. But I mean, <laughs> especially when I keep uh, abreast of what's happening. Well, you know, the, the new yeah. music press in England won't tell you what's, what's happening. Yeah. Well, they'll tell you what's happened. happened. <laughs> <laughs> but they tell you what they'd like to happen. They won't they tell me what's actually you. happening. Yeah. You won't like, you educate me in any way. Mm. Right, for you, it's just, you know, they like to say more shite, you know. Mm. They just, they, they write what they think it's hip to write. I mean, a lot of them are starting to cover themselves, especially with those, they go, this is a pile of rubbish, but it's starting to sound good. I like <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's what they do. In other words, they're saying, I, I don't know whether this is good or not, because it, no, you know, it's not a big hit, so maybe it's not that good. But then again, I like it, mm. and it's a bit of a hit, so maybe it's good. And like now, they just don't know. You know, it's like, uh, hang on, because they, they expected us to disappear after three mm. singles. And it's we now didn't. three albums, and we're still there, still going strong. And we're still, we still seem to be in the same position as we were with the press and anything to do with that. Now, as we were in the very beginning, mm -hmm. but they're beginning to listen to us a bit more now, and they're beginning to write nicer things because you know that from what slagging that they've given us, and we should, all, be, everything, we we should be destroyed, and dead. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be around anymore. But we're still around, and the bands that they hailed and said this is going to be it. And not so. We are still here, you know. After yeah, and there's now all that. There's, there's a new generation of bands now that because we were successful, they're starting to sound like, like us. us. Oh, I mean, there's, there's was your glamorous, mm -hmm. you know. What did the uh, audience think of this? They loved it. <laughs> and we're talking about we're playing in, in front of a small bar, mm -hmm. you know, with 15 people there, mm -hmm. and we were doing it then, and we got great success and stuff. Mm -hmm. It yeah. As soon as we started doing our mainline tour, I mean, never did that. The only, the only spacey thing was the hair, wasn't it? And we noticed people coming up and asking for autographs and giving us presents dressed similar to what we were. And that was good. Why did you drop that, though? Well, we didn't want to stick with it and we didn't want people to label us as looking like that. You know, we wanted to just try to become ourselves using that way of, you know, that, that say you're using that as a, like our springboard, you know. People now know the name of the band. Now we've got to convince them that we're not just a, a fashion. fashion. You know, we're going to be here to like and do things for the next five, six, ten years, whatever. And, and our, we'd like our audience to be the kind of audience as anybody can like a flock of seagulls. Mm. We don't want all the people to come looking like all makeup and nice haircuts and clothes. We'd like anybody who can listen to the music can come can be like a seagull fan. But they do anyway, we've got quite a wide yeah. spectrum, yeah. the audience yeah. covers a wide range. Yeah. Mums, dads, kids, granny. I mean, we get, yeah. we get like, you know, like he says, mums and dads coming up with their kids at the concert, and they say, I love that song, the more you live, the more you love. You know, and they say, like, wow, and the kids go, yeah, it's great, and the fathers go, yeah, I like that one as well. Whereas before, when we were space fans... You apparently debuted as a band you know, in 79, he says, at a time when, you know, the new wave seems sort of flowering, and you apparently appeared on stage in, in Space Club, is that right? News to us. <laughs> no, Frank and I used to go, we used to go out to clubs and stuff dressed a bit spacey, didn't we? Yeah. Because, I mean, you're talking about a punk scene where everyone's in black with black spiky hair, mm -hmm. and Frank and I, you'd go out with, like, bright red hair and uh, purple and green space type tunic, and I'd go out in, a, like, um, what colour was that, like, wine colour? Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we weren't trying to really radically be different. We were just trying to say to for ourselves that we just we wanted it. to go in a direction where we wanted to do what we wanted to do and try and be like the people say I want to look like that. Mm. I didn't want to say I want to look like him. I wanted people to say I want to look like him. And we began to do it and it, 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 be, it began to show when we, begin, we began to tour that we found that we could wear things like and people it spilled tomato sauce on myself someone will copy me. You know, that's not to say doing that, but trying to 
to, to be in that situation where people will say, oh, I like the way he dresses, and not copy anybody else. But, but being influenced by, by certain fashions and styles, not actually copying. Hmm. That was on, on stage? You said you on Anop. It was on Anop. It was a full time situation. Without being too polite. We've got to play your big songs 15 years' time. I mean, mm -hmm. we'd like actually to drop all those songs and do new ones, but you can't do it, you know. And I think a lot of bands would like to do that as well. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I used to get beat up in the street for, for not being a punk rocker or because I'd been one in like 1977, 78 when I was like really young. Uh -huh. I mean, me and Michael going out dressed in the like kind of uh, eccentric, we used to spacey like, clothes. Like I get out of stuff. I'd end up in hospital. Didn't you know? Yeah. But we got we got negativity. You know, we got bad reviews. You know, we got pr the press, press always hated us. You know, by the press hate. Just because we weren't doomy and blue. Because we were 1984 and 1981. Mm. And like, you know, we didn't, we never mentioned politics, still don't, you know, like, you know, the British press loves it, politics, you know. Yeah. Like, okay. and, uh, we refused, you know. Mm. They, they got the clash and all that to talk about. Frankie goes to Hollywood, the classic, you know, rock politicians. Mm. You know. Okay, yeah. yeah, we took quite a bit of stick on the way. We still do sometimes, you know. Mm. It's part of the game, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Probably more time you must be pretty fed up with the uh, press and printing that. No, we're not fed up because we don't, don't read the papers. <laughs> <laughs> right. no? It's like, what? Why? Why? Yeah, the head is not that. It was a really like a, a section of, wasn't it, of like fashionable kids that used to come and see us. But now it's starting to spread. So we see that as like, okay, we're not maybe as, as in the public eye and not selling as many records. But the base is firm now, you know, and it's like, it's going to take a while now to filter through into the, the whole spectrum of people. Mm. But the thanks, thing is now, when we hit it out. big now, it's going to be <laughs> real big. Thanks for having watch out. Because <laughs> when I ran was a hit and all that, that, that could have been just a flash. So many bands come up with like a great concept, one or two songs, thank you, good night. You know, and then that, they're still trying to do the same thing again five years later with the same style. Mm. And it's no good. You've got to get out of it. Whatever made you a success, you've got to ride it for what it's worth and then change show people that you, you know, you're a musician, not a fan. Mm -hmm. you know, so I don't want to try and get to 40 years old and still trying to be put my hair up <laughs> in wings, you know what I mean? Right, right. So we decided that we calm ourselves down and just become musicians. Seems to be an especially common form of evolution among uh, British bands. The way that I was looking for before, <laughs> evolution, yeah. evolution. Um, you know, <coughs> the modern American guys just stay the same for yeah. 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but then again, that's, that's, right. <laughs> that's Americana, though, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's the way they are. Uh -huh. That's the important thing about music, you know, it's like 